Sheet. So why don't we start? In the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night, Lord Jesus Christ, Passover, from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray and keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity. Who through your Son bestowed on the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may so inflame by heavenly desires with mind and heart made pure that we may attain the festival of unending splendor. Our Lord. Amen. Bell, the darkness. Chris, I still have to blow. For seven.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. trumpet of salvation sound loud a mighty king's triumph be glad let earth be glad as glory floods her a blaze with light from her eternal king of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of His glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God in the Almighty Father and Jesus Christ our Lord his Son his only begotten who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father and pouring out his own blood wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness these then are the feasts of Passover in which is slain the lamb the one true lamb whose blood announced anoints the doorposts of slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with the pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even Sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices 
And from the gloom of sin Leading them to grace And joining them to his holy ones This is the night When Christ broke the prison bars of death And rose victorious from the underworld Oh, wonder of your humble care for us Oh, love, oh, charity beyond all telling To ransom a slave You gave away your son Oh, truly necessary sin of Adam destroyed completely by the death of Christ oh happy fault that earned so great so glorious a redeemer the sanctifying power of this light dispels all Goodness and washes thoughts away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Oh, truly blessed night when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine. your night of grace O oh, Holy Father accept this candle a solemn offering the work of bees and of your servants hands an evening sacrifice of praise this gift from your most holy This candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it meet. of heaven may this flame be found still burning by the morning star the one morning star who never sets Christ your son who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we begin our vigil for the resurrection, please extinguish your candles and pass them to the side aisles and be seated for the readings.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. He called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was, and then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars, and God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. And evening came, and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Almighty and ever-living God, who orders all your works, may those you have redeemed to understand there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except at the end of ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Adam to the test. He called to him, Adam, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your, on your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Then they came to the place of which God had uh, told him. Adam built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Adam, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God. 
since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out your grace of adoption throughout the world, through the Paschal mystery, as once you swore to your servant Abraham, the father of nations, that your people may enter into the grace to which you call them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them the column of cloud, also leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, 
the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptians' force a glance that threw it into panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could not hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst and the, and the water flowed back. It covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning and wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people, grant that all nations may attain the privilege of Israel and become reborn of your spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth, and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great tenderness I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity 
on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and, un and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass what you have pledged to the pa patriarchs and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass to your church may now be fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you an everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. 
Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to the Lord who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as the heavens, just as from the heavens, the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of, the, of this present age, increase the longing of your people for only the prompting of your grace to do faithful progress in virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom, had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where are lengths of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with the four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him, trembling before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice, 
When he calls them, they answer, Here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. constantly increase your church by your call to the nations. Grant that those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols, scattered them among the nations, dispersed them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which they came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart, 
and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statues, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the mysteries of your church and accomplish the works of salvation which you plan for all eternity. May the whole world know and see what was cast down is raised up, what has become old has been made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ just as by Christ they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness in life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin for a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. And as to life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. 
with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, I, it's a strange night. You start with that bonfire. Everybody processes in, which just from my side, I wish you could have seen it. It was so beautiful to see all these candles, um, everybody lighting it. But just to explain it, um, the major symbol here is light. So light is a big theme in the Bible from the very beginning to the very end in heaven. And uh, God, uh, by the way, it didn't, in Genesis, it doesn't, God didn't say let there be light. Actually, in the Hebrew, what God says is light. But remember, there's two types of light in the Bible because physical light that we see by, that isn't created till the fourth day. So on the first day, when God says light, and creation is filled with light. What is that light? It's spiritual light. It's a Holy Spirit. And that light, um, the whole theme is it's moved and guided humanity. That light, the Shehena of God hovered upon the waters of creation, drawing out light. It led Abraham. It led the Israelites. Um, and this sounds kind of strange. So the light, the Holy Spirit would come over people and guide them. But, and this is, actually, I love this, where um, in Exodus, when the Hebrews are slaves, it says there was darkness throughout Egypt except the light that burned in the homes of the Hebrew. Um, So the light is among us. But then the prophets foretold that one day the light would be in us. That's shocking. That doesn't happen in the Old Testament. Only with Christ will Christ put the light in us. And so when you get to heaven, uh, even in the Old Testament and the book of Revelation, heaven, uh, God is light. And it says the saints, they burn as bright as the sun. So the whole theme is light tonight that, wow, just starting with Genesis of the light being created outside um, and into us. Um, oh, lost something. Um, Uh, Sorry, I lost my homily. Um, But don't worry, I have a backup. Um, Because I forget where I'm going. But I love that, where we started, and we passed the the light to each other. And think about this. Uh, There's an expression in Spanish, dar dar de luz, which really means give birth. But with each of us holding a light, we can see each other's faces and recognize us as brothers and sisters. So for 2,000 years, we've been passing that light along from one generation to another. And tonight in baptism, um, in the New Testament, to baptize somebody is to enlighten them. We're going to pass the light again. So light is that we celebrate. In the resurrection, the light is in us. But also, uh, you have the theme of water. Now, I know this is review because I love symbols and I over-preach them, but I don't care. You can never hear enough. 
Water is a big theme in the Bible from the beginning to the very end in the book of Revelation. And water, um, it's really funny because hopefully my OCA people will know the answer of this. Um, in the Old Testament, when anybody gets near water, what happens to them? Jacob, what happens to him? Oh, dang it. It's so like there's this character named Jacob. And um, not you. Um, and Jacob's wild, untamed. Uh, then he gets near water and he sees the most beautiful woman and he falls in love. Now that happens to everybody in the Old Testament. After a while, you can't miss it. Moses, when he gets near water, guess what happens to him? Oh, you guys are catching on. Um, <laughs> And Moses was a coward. And suddenly, once he passes over the water, passes through the water, not only does he love for the first time, but he's no longer a coward. Jacob is no longer selfish. He only thinks about his beloved and his family. And over time, they become more and more holy. Water is a symbol of love, but it's also a symbol of change. So it's like the Israelites, they go through the water. And once they go through the water with Moses... Um, they're no longer slaves. That, when you go through the water, something dies. Their slavery dies. And God says, oh, no, you're not just 12 tribes. You're now one people because you went through the water. And then the prophecy is when the Christ come, he would make all people pass through the water again. Um, it's water that makes us one people. Uh, so in the waters of baptism... We're one with the resurrection, Christ. And every Catholic throughout the world, after, um, on Easter, uh, after the homily, we do this sprinkling rite. But I love that because you heard the prophecy. It was in the reading where God says, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and give you a new heart and a new spirit. It's going to be putting Christ in us. And so we gather to celebrate the resurrection uh, and renew our resurrection. Now, this kind of drives me up a wall, but in case you didn't know, I'm a little on the edge. It comes from being Irish and short, because um, like, people confuse resurrection with resuscitation. And so, like, there's this meme I saw today, which I should not be on the internet, because the atheist put out, well, Jesus was not the first to be resurrected. I think it was Osiris, the Greek god, not Greek, Egyptian, God was resurrected. And when I read that, of course, being always sane, I got upset because, no, he wasn't resurrected. His wife um, took different body parts and sewed them back together, but he was really kind of like this Frankenstein. Uh, that's not resurrection. Um, resurrection is not returning to your same life. Resurrection is a whole new life. It's not returned to your same life. It's a completely new life. It's a life of Christ in us. So we, the only place that's discussed in nowhere in other religions, yeah, some other religions say you can return back to life. You don't want to return back to the same life. Once you go through the water, we want a whole new life, a life that death can never touch, not just return to the same old. And so, like, the book of Daniel says, oh, one day the light will be put into people, and when the Christ comes, they'll be resurrected. They'll have a life that death can never touch. That's not returning to the same old life. That's a totally new life. That the life of Christ, the life and love of Christ, now flows through us. Um, so we celebrate that. So the resurrection is really a deeper life. Uh, it's not returning to the same. Or I love um, in Acts where St. Peter says, and I like this, he says, we ate and drank with Christ. I like that because he didn't say we had a vision of Christ. Because, you know, that could be wish fulfillment or illusion or, you know, a mental thing. You know, they, for 40 days, sorry, yeah, 40 days, Christ always would appear on Sunday at the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist. We ate and drank with Christ, not a ghost. A ghost, if you have dinner with a ghost and you ask a ghost to pass the salt, you're never going to get that salt. 
Um, his point being is that Christ was very real. So Christianity is not a philosophy. Um, it's a relationship uh, with a life. And so the amazing part is, in the resurrection, Christ impacts the lives of his followers far, far more after his death in the resurrection than before. Because a lot of people say, oh, all you need to do is read the Bible. I got to disagree with that. Because the Bible does not explain the resurrection. The resurrection explains the Bible. Once you understand the resurrection, then the Bible makes sense. But the Bible can't explain the resurrection. It has to be in you. And so think about this. Over the centuries, Christ's resurrection in his followers has changed the course of history. Like, really, who invented hospitals, education? That was us. And there's no explanation, no reasonable explanation can be given for all the accounts of the transformed lives of people who have been touched by the resurrection. So think about it. Like uh, St. Francis, you know, really, um, he was a selfish little rich guy. And then he gets the resurrection, uh, has this deeper conversion, and spends his life in poverty and love and communion with all of nature. St. Ignatius, loved St. Ignatius, but he was an angry battler. Then after his conversion in the resurrection, he changes the world by not fighting, but fighting to defend the faith and changing people's lives. Or even, like, this is a strange story, I thought of it today because I was talking to a friend on the phone, and I have this one friend named Petey, and to be honest, I love him. He's an old friend, but I'm about to throw him under the bus. Um, he's ex-military, comes from a very military family, uh, then spent his life as a mechanic. And among us friends, we always, our nickname for him is the most miserable human being in the world. <laughs> but like, he's, he's a good friend. He's loyal to the nth degree. He'll do anything for anybody. But he's always been so angry. But um, the amazing part is, in the last 10 years, he's come back to the Catholic Church. Well, he's always Catholic, but he starts practicing his faith, coming to the Eucharist. And the amazing part is, over the last 10 years, there's this been huge change in PD. Where we're talking today on the phone, and we're joking, because I said, he's not the same person we're used to. I mean, of everybody we know, he's the most patient. Nobody would have said that. I'm like, he's from New York and ex-military. You know, really, once he started to practice his faith a lot more, holy cow, there's been a huge change. So the resurrection slowly transforms us. That's why we keep coming back week after week after week. But tonight, we celebrate the triduum, the end of the triduum, the three days. Christ spent three days and then was resurrected. We spent Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. And just to explain that symbol, every time three days comes up in the Bible, it means that you've had this change and you see the light. So it doesn't matter. Think of Queen Esther or Jacob or Abraham. Always on the third day, they see the light. And they see the world completely different. So when it says he was raised up on the third day, on the third day they go to the tomb, you don't get it in English, but when they said they saw, the Greek word edo means, ah, they saw and believed. On the third day they saw and believed. And that's what I want for all of us as well, to slowly change where the light is so in us we, recognize, we see the world differently. We see each other, brothers and sisters. We see this communion. And so we celebrate the resurrection tonight, welcoming those into the church. And I just want to end with this, because I love this guy. Um, his name is Saint Melito. And I like him because he was a bit of a fighter, and everything he said was kind of pugnacious. Uh, like, it's like a grenade being launched. Who doesn't like somebody like that? Um, <laughs> But he gives this Easter homily where he says about, he says, this is what Christ said. I am life. I am living love. Who can take me on? I can take on anyone. 
sickness, death, injustice, anger. I can fight them all. But I warn you, I'm the strongest. And then he says, um, that life, that living power of love born in you, the resurrection, that makes us one. And he said, evil always has its hour. But in the resurrection, we have eternity. I love that. This is a victory celebration. We who pass through the water, the light is in us. We celebrate the resurrection. And so I'd like to call Kathy to come forward and invite those into the church who are becoming Catholic, who want to be baptized. Elora Carlson, Josiah Carlson, Rachel Clever, David Creamer, Ellen Creamer, June Creamer, Ruth Creamer, Christopher Gummison, Stacy Gummison, Edith McCarthy, Emil McCarthy, Franklin McCarthy, Stella Rainwater, Elizabeth Reed, Griffin Reed, Hazel Reed, Pamela Summers, Kevin Yeoman. With one heart and one soul, let us pray for those to be baptized and invite those in heaven to join us.
this holy water. O God, who from the first moments of the world's creation, the Holy Spirit hovered upon the waters, O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed a new birth and made an end to vice, a new beginning to virtue, O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea to be an image of God's people set free from slavery. God, whose Son, as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commissioned his disciples to go forth to teach to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Look upon the font, the face of your church, and unseal for her the, the font of baptism. May this water... Receive the Holy Spirit, the grace of your only begotten Son, so that created in your image, washed clean through the sacrament of baptism, old ways, we may rise to new life through the water and the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit come down through your Son on the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ in baptism may rise to new life with him who lives and reigns forever in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And before you're baptized, I ask you to renew your, to uh, profess your faith. And so I ask you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce evil and refuse to be mastered by it? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the father of lies and the prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestow on us forgiveness of our sins and keep us in your grace. And so for the baptisms, do you guys want to be seated? Lord, 
Sarah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. you in the name of the Father and of 
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, you have become a new creation. You have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this baptismal garment your dignity and bring it unstained to the seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, where you will have eternal life. Sponsors, please give the newly baptized the light of Christ. Receive the light of faith. You have been enlightened by Christ. You are to walk always as children of the light. May you keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. And when the Lord comes, may you go out to greet Christ with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Congratulations on your baptism. God bless you. Now I'd like to call forth those who are going to be received into the Catholic Church. Alan Aiken. Lauren Aiken. 
Lisa Aitken, Joshua B, Jacob Bonwell, Bronislava Colley, Andrew Griswold, James Griswold, Rosa Griswold, Mackenzie Maycumber, Orissa Maycumber, Brian Reed, Linda Sykes, Abigail Waterdown, Janet Waterdown. So, candidates, I ask you, do you believe and profess all that the Catholic Church believes and proclaims that is revealed by God? So, now we'll confirm, everyone. Now, baptism celebrates our union with Christ and therefore our communion with each other and all the saints. Confirmation is this anointing that your life has a purpose, um, that you have a uniqueness that your life will be this uh, gift to God. All those who are anointed in the Bible, their life is turned back into a gift to God. And so let us pray. A powerful God of our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, has freed you and made you sons and daughters. Send forth your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Oh, <laughs> 
the grace. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Augustine of Hippo, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, be sealed with the gift. Be sealed with 
the gift of the Holy Spirit. Kevin, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Abigail, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, congratulations on your baptism and confirmation. God bless you. And please stand for the sprinkling rite. The offertory hymn is Christ Be Our Light. You can find the words in Breaking Bread number 161.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that these gifts which represent our lives may be an acceptable sacrifice to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept the prayers of your people with sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries May, by the working of your power, bring us the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on this day, this night, above all, we laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, restored us to new life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, we join with all the angels and saints as we proclaim your glory. fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was handed over and willingly entered into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. 
Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the apostles, and with all the saints, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. United as God's family, we dare to pray to receive Christ, the bread of life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
they wept The morning sun was dead The saviour of the world was fallen His body on the cross His blood poured out for us The weight of every curse upon Him One final breath He gave As heaven looked away the Son of God was laid in darkness, a battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken, the began to shake.
In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you come running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From the throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Let us pray. Let's start this way. O oh God, look upon your church with unfailing love, so that renewed by these Paschal mysteries, we may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, um, uh, two things. One, um, in case you don't know, the Easter season is 50 days. It starts today, and Mass ends with a singing of the deacon, doing the double Alleluia, and then... <laughs> 
50 days later, the Pentecost, uh, we sing the double Alleluia. And then uh, after Mass, immediately in the hospitality room, we have this reception for all those who have come into the church. So, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. Okay, now we're going to do it right. You're going to so. sing it. <laughs> the Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Join us in singing the closing hymn, Alleluia, Love's Alive. You can find the words in the Breaking Bread Missal 171.